In this video, we're going to have some fun with soft body physics. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to carry on learning a little bit more about physics. So we will get back to doing some modeling practice, but I do think that playing around with physics can be fun and understanding how to use it can really help you play around with your designs. So in the last video, what we did is we talked about particle systems. We added wind, we talked about gravity and colliders. And in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about creating soft body dynamics. So the first thing that we wanna do is in a new design, we're gonna delete our default cube. So under object, we're going to select delete, or you can hit X on the keyboard. Next, I'm going to hide my camera and light. I'm going to keep them in here, but I don't need them for right now. And we want to add a plane. Just like we did before, we're going to go to add, mesh, and plane. We're going to scale that up. And then we're going to turn it into a collision system. So before we even get started adding any additional objects, we're just going to make sure that it has the collision modifier. We're not going to be using a plane as a particle emitter, but we are going to be using them to collide with. The next thing that we want to do is we want to add another object. So we're going to go to mesh, and in this case, we're going to add a UV sphere. We're going to say G and Z to move it vertically, and we want to reduce the number. Now you'll notice as soon as we do this, we can't change it at all, but if we delete this, and we go to add mesh UV sphere. Before we accept it, we can change the number of segments. So this is gonna be important because we wanna reduce the number of segments down. The lower the count here, the easier it will be for our physics to be able to solve this. So we're gonna change the number of rings to eight and the number of segments to 12. And if we look at this, you can see that it's got a much lower polygon count. So then we can hit G and Z and we can move it up. And now you can see that our creation dialog is gone. So let's move it a little bit higher, just, just a small amount. And now what we have is we've got this object here, this mesh sphere, and then we've got this plane, which is going to be our collider. But we haven't told it anything about what this is yet. So before when we created our particle system, we went to our modifiers and we created a particle system. In this case, what we're gonna do is create a soft body modifier. So we're gonna select soft body, and then we have to go to the physics tab to see all the information. Now, if we just hit play now, you can see that it sort of just bounces around. What we wanna do here is we wanna allow it to drop down to see what happens. So unlike particle physics, it's a little bit more tricky for us to define these. So you'll notice that we've got a handful of areas. We've got our object, which gives us friction and mass. We've got simulation, which gives us a speed. Cache, with just like particle physics, we can bake the, the simulation. And then we've got a goal, and we've got settings, strengths, we've got edges, and inside of edges, we've got push and pull. And then there are aerodynamics, stiffness, self-collision, and so on. So as we look inside of here, if we turn off goal and hit play, you'll notice that now the object drops. It collides with our plane, and then it sort of turns into this big mess here. It, it sort of just folds in on itself. So what we want to do in order to uh, sort of alleviate that problem is we want to talk about some of these other values. We've got pull and push, and these are going to be, you probably think of these as tension values. If we increase the pull, I'm going to go ahead and jump back to the start and let it drop. Increasing the pull closer to one allows it to pull in on itself a bit more. Increasing the push gives it a little bit more stiffness. And you can see now it's able to push and then it sort of collides on itself. So why is it folding in on itself when it's falling down? It bounces first, but then it sort of falls in on itself. So let's pause and let's go back to the start and let's take a look at our settings. The next thing that we want to change in this case is this bending number. Now, this bending number is a little bit difficult, but it's essentially what it's doing is it's giving us a stiffness to allow each of these mesh faces to prevent them from bending. So I'm going to start dragging this up. Let's set it to about five. Unlike some of the other values, it's not a zero to one value, but let's set it up to five and let's see what happens. So you can see now it doesn't fold in on itself and it's just kind of bouncing there and it begins to roll away at some point. 
Okay, so at this point, we haven't really made it a soft body. Right now, all it's doing is it's dropping and it's sort of bouncing there. So let's modify our pull and our push values. I'm gonna take these back down to 0.5, which was the original value, and let it play. So now when we drop, you can see that we're getting sort of that jello reaction. We're getting that push and that pull, and it's sort of just bouncing there. If we go back and we drop these even lower, let's leave the pull at 0.5 and let's set the push down to 0.2. Now, again, these values are talking about the sort of the resistance as they're as they're set closer to one, it's going to be stiffer. As they're set lower, it's going to be softer. So if we drop the pull down to zero, you can see that it just sort of flattens itself out like a puddle. So that is not allowing it to resist the the pull between them. And this one here is not allowing it to resist the pull, the push, I'm sorry. So as we increase these, we can get closer to a, a certain value. And then we have these dampening numbers. So we can kick the dampening up, which means that each time it bounces, it's going to absorb some of that force. If we make it go up higher, as it starts to drop, you can see that the first one comes up to about here. Second one is half of that. Third one is even further. And then it'll eventually just sort of drop down. So those are the basic settings that we need to use in order to understand soft body physics. I'm gonna reset these down to something a bit softer. I'm gonna set my push and my pull down to 0.5. I'm gonna leave the dampening there and the bending value there. And this last one here, plasticity, think about this as permanently deforming the object. So with the permanent deformation value set to zero, it's going to return to whatever shape we started with. If we increase this, then it's going to start deforming on impact. So as it hits, you can see that the bottom is sort of flattened out. It's no longer maintaining that round shape. And this affects things if we give it more mass, if we increase this number, it's gonna have more of a drastic effect. And obviously if we were to make our push and our pull numbers softer, it's going to also have an effect on that. For this example, I'm gonna leave plasticity at zero because I want it to be able to bounce back. Now that we've figured out some of these settings, I'm going to use G and Z and I'm gonna move this up a bit higher. Then I'm gonna take my plane and I'm going to duplicate this. Now you can do this with Shift and D on the keyboard. You can also go to Object and you can duplicate objects. Either of those will be fine. I'm going to use Shift and D and then Z to move it up. Then I'm going to say G and Y to move it over in the Y. And then I'm going to say R and X to rotate it about X. And then I'm just going to sort of move it around a little bit. And then I'm going to Shift D to duplicate that. So again, you can go to object, you can go to duplicate objects, and we wanna make sure that we rotate this around. And then we're going to duplicate it in the Y direction. I'm gonna rotate it about X, put it back this way, maybe move it up a little bit. And what we're looking to do is create something where it can bounce off of one than the other. Because we duplicated these objects, each one of them should automatically have our collision system enabled. So if we hit play, we should see that it bounces off of each of those. You can see that soft body allowing it to roll and bounce, and then it can bounce off of this one. And because that one is the last, it sort of drops off into space. So that's a pretty cool effect. We can't really see the planes from this view, but you can kind of see what's going on. It bounces off of this one, and we can play around with our numbers. So if we select our sphere and we go to our values, we can increase the push and the pull a little bit. We'll restart this back at the beginning, and then it's going to change the way it interacts with these. And again, we can mess with the dampening, we can mess with the bending values, and if we change the plasticity, we're gonna get some permanent deformation each time it hits, depending on its mass, and you can just sort of play around with this. The last bit that I wanna mention here is using a subdivision modifier. So at this point, we wanted all of the physics to be calculated based off a low poly count. So we're gonna go in and add a modifier. We're gonna use a subdivision surface. We're gonna kick it up to two. We are not gonna apply it, we're gonna leave it on. And then we're gonna right click and shade smooth. So now we added that after the fact, we can play through using our subdivision surface. You can see that what we have here, it allows us to view that. Another thing to keep in mind is 
we can modify any of these bodies. We could adjust the size of or the shape of this. We could move these planes around. And so for example, let's go ahead and edit the bottom plane. I'm gonna go to edge mode. I'm gonna grab this edge. I'm gonna hit E to extrude and Z to move it up. Then I'm gonna move it G and Y in the Y direction a little bit, just to give me something else to bounce off of, and then tab to get out of edit mode. So now if I play through, again, we're gonna bounce off of here. Keeping in mind, I haven't changed the number of frames that we're working with, but now it's gonna bounce off of the wall instead of falling down. So again, very cool effect that we can play around with soft body physics, and this is well outside of the realm of any parametric CAD program. You're not gonna get this type of interaction. Even though in programs like Fusion 360, we can turn on collision sets, we can actually look at solid body collisions, but we're never gonna get soft body dynamics out of that. So as you're seeing this, as you're playing around with it, think about different things that you can do with your designs because in Blender, we're not just limited to the 3D modeling, but we can also include things like particle systems, soft body dynamics, and there's quite a bit more that we could do. This is just an introduction to using soft body dynamics, but hopefully it gives you a little bit more information about how you can set something like this up on your own and play around with it. From here, I would suggest you do continue to play around, just seeing what you can do without really any major goal in mind. And then from there, expand on it. In the next video, we will get back to some modeling. I just wanted to take a little bit of a detour here because playing around with physics simulation and using soft body dynamics can be pretty fun. There's a lot more that I do wanna cover, things like smoke and fire and liquid, but for right now, we're gonna get back to the modeling in the next video. If you have any questions, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.